Welcome to a new episode of Outside the Panels with your host, Johnny the Machine Hughes. Welcome everyone to an episode of Outside the Panels. I am your host, Johnny the Machine Hughes, and in honor of the Dolphins winning at the weekend in week one, in splendid fashion against the San Diego Chargers, I am wearing my 1994 throwback Marino shirt. Yes, you can be a geek and a sports fan all at the same time. What can I say? All right, you're not here to hear me wax lyrical about the Dolphins, although, you know, Tyreek Kill for the MVP, not saying much. Um, I'm here to talk about comic books, and you know I love a Kickstarter, and I have got an absolute peach to talk about today. So, without further ado, let's bring on co-creator right there, uh, Josh Viola. Josh! Thanks for having me. Hey, man, how's it going? Good, good. Good to meet you. How are you? I'm very well. Yeah. I'm basking in the success of a week one victory. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I, I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're in Denver, so how did you guys do? <laughs> well, uh, 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 yeah, uh, I won't, won't get into any of yeah. that. But, but, but this, honestly, this, the reason why is because I don't follow it. So. Uh, I was going to say, this is the line where you turn around and say, hey, man, I like baseball. You know that? Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I'm definitely the geek that is not the sports uh, guy. Sorry, no. sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. But all my friends are, so, yeah. Uh, Ooh, excellent. Uh, yeah. excellent. We shall not hold that against them. All right, Josh, <laughs> we, <laughs> we're here to talk about a new Kickstarter you've got going. Uh, it's called uh, True Believers, correct? Correct, yes. True Believers, a horror cosplay comic book. What, why, and how <laughs> is basically where I'm going to start with. Yeah, sure. Well, well uh, I wanted to uh, – it's very meta. Uh, so okay. True Believers is very meta. It actually – it takes place at a convention that I frequent. Uh, I'm a sponsor of here oh, at the okay. Colorado Festival of Horror. Uh, <laughs> and um, – I've never, I've never dove too heavily into meta horror or, or mm-hmm. meta anything as far as the stuff that I've written. So I thought, man, what a, what a cool opportunity to do some sort of exclusive for the convention and mm-hmm. let's set it there. So when people walk into the convention to get this comic book, they, they see it. We're actually going to reenact some of the, the panels, I think, this weekend at the show. Um, but oh, then wow. a, as we started getting into it and I wrote Stephen Graham Jones into the project, uh, who's um, the 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 guy behind Earth Divers? Uh, IDW mm-hmm. is a pretty very popular series right now. Mm-hmm. Um, we started talking, going back and forth, and the opportunity to really grow this beyond just people for the con presented mm-hmm. itself. And so, so we really let's do a Kickstarter. I've got we've got some fun ideas. So yeah, excellent. Uh, if you're going to react panels of of this in the in the con, um, I hope you've got a young lady dressed in black for the event, right? Oh, well, we, yeah. We, yeah, yeah, well, I, absolutely. But because of my, you'll ego, see the picture in the wild. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, Stephen and I are in the panel. That's easier to reenact. But we do ah. actually have at the show uh, because our one of the characters in the book, the the slasher, the villain, so, sort of uh, killer. Um, we do have somebody cosplaying at at the show this weekend. So All we right. um, we're, we're doing as much as we can to to bring it to life. So. So watch out, watch out when you're yes. looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not just going to be the uh, guys selling the comic books that are going to make a killing this time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that, that's actually the the beautiful thing is we're embracing the identity for everybody, right? Mm. So um, that's what's fun as you go through the comics. We're we're playing into that cosplay, so we're yeah. showing all kinds of crazy cosplay. Uh, 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 angles right from different right, spectrums. Cool. so yeah kind of neat so cosplay it's a huge there are a couple of things we talked about in just in there meta and cosplay these are supposed two aspects the meta is is huge right now and you could count it all the way back to places like deadpool and harley the way they break the fourth wall now we've got stories set in the real world the amount of times i pick up a comic book and it's like ai gone mad you know it's like wait a right. second didn't I just see that on the news? Oh, yeah. Right. So <laughs> well, they've imagine, been in that for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine Grammarly goes nuts and spells everything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, no, the meta angle, um, you know, I like to 
there, there's lots of examples, right? But for me, especially because this is horror, mm -hmm. um, Wes Craven, you know, really did it Good with uh, uh, with Scream and with uh, 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 Nightmare. Um, so, uh, and Steven and I both being huge fans of the first Scream film and horror guys and all that, uh, you know, it's just like, ah, uh, Steven's kind of dipped into the meta thing before, but I, I've always been afraid to, but this, this was a lot of fun. Let me ask you a question then, because I'm not kind of, I'm not down with the meta. I mean, obviously I've, I've seen Scream 1 and there's that whole bit where the guy is talking about someone always goes upstairs and, you know, the phone always cuts off and all that sort of stuff. Do you find that um, when you write with meta in mind that you run the risk of dating a book or dating a project because it's kind of set on that specific idea? Well, so how do you manage to get around that? Um, to some extent, I, I can see that. However, for our book, um, we've created the fiction, the lore. So mm -hmm. Killer is our Michael Myers in our universe. Ah, um, okay. So our characters in this comic book, they're attending a con. To, to Kit and Rip, two in particular, are attending this con. Rip is the uh, uh, character who's never attended, but he's this hardcore fan of Killer. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Kit, um, she's, she's kind of a veteran. She, does, she has a booth. She's working the con. She's selling cosplay items. Mm -hmm. So they're coming to this convention as fans of this fictional character that we've created. So it's meta, but it all still fits within its own universe. Right. Right. Um, uh, so hopefully that, that, that helps us avoid dating something because we're kind of setting up the rules, right. but, but we're, we're putting it in the actual convention and, you know, we've got mm. cameos like Steven and I make an appearance and a few other people. Uh, and we're actually, that's a Kickstarter, mm. um, reward is we can draw you in and we're currently trying to work on some other cameos which i can't say a whole lot more about but if it works it's going to be awesome but, right. but uh, you know uh, uh, in, in that respect i think that that it'll um uh, and yeah this takes place at the Car colorado convention of horror colorado festival of horror they're going to kill me um <laughs> <laughs> but uh but it doesn't matter if you've never been there you know yeah. the, you know it's the same thing right it, it yeah. everybody that's been to a con knows that that atmosphere it's, yeah. it's cosplayers celebrating the stuff that they love every time i go to kind of like an event over here i always see i see lots of cosplayers which is cool and i see lots of lots of merch which is kind of cool and then i'll say to someone uh is anybody selling comic books and look at me and if i've got, got like a third head what do, you, what do you mean comic books really like, well i guess i'm not going to any uh conventions over there then because <laughs> that um, go on. Uh, well I, I everyone that i've been to that that's a huge fixture i mean comics are that's what i go for me but, too. but i mean i guess it i guess it just depends on where you're going right i mm. mean uh uh um for here for colorado i i'm attracted to um, a lot of the indie kind of stuff. So they, mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff that, that you can um, get your hands on in that mm -hmm. regard. So I'm talking, so like some small, small cons around the Northeast, um, things like Teesside Unleashed, that's Northeast of the UK. Um, Thought Bubble, of course, the big one in November, down in Harrogate, loads of comics, loads of cosplay, loads of merch. It's a whole week-long festival of comic books resulting in the, in the final Saturday being the con day. Um, so always check that out if you get uh, if you get a chance. It yeah, yeah. Par excellence. Um, you know what? We've talked about your Kickstarter. Should we have a look at the trailer? Yes, let's do it. Um, give me two seconds and the wonders of technology and all that. That should be there as we speak. <gasps> all right. So this is a scary horror movie. Hide behind your cushions, everyone. <laughs> Don't be throwing your popcorn at the screen. Here we go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
It was scary. It was it was scary to make. I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> who did the uh, Who did the music? Let's start in golf key a little bit because the music's proper. Well, key. it really the uh, the editing came down. Everything for video production. I worked with uh, Brian Patience. Um, he's done quite a few um, trailers for comics, kickstarters, and mm -hmm. video game um, trailers. And we'd worked together uh uh on another uh comic book slash video game project so he did that that that's uh by and large the product of brian patience just one dude yeah well and obviously the artwork comes from the comic of course yeah. so that's been matsuya but what well, what's it like because i mean it's it's a it's a quite a diverse creative team you've got yourself you've got stephen graham jones a bit of you're, you're a bit of a fan of stephen so how's that kind of working should you meet your heroes well, well, I'm a fan of his, but I'm also a friend. So we've, ah. we've, uh, he lives like 20 minutes from here. We've known each other for like 12 years. Um, and I've published, uh, I own Hex Publishers and I've published many of his short stories and, uh, one of his comics that he did a one-off comic called My Hero, which is really experimental and weird in a good way. Um, mm. cause it's a comic book that's basically got no art, uh, really interesting, um, it shows panel. It's basically a, again meta. It's a meta story where the artist and the writer are communicating through the panels. So you see uh, their story and the story that they're writing, and it's really uh, interesting. So anyhow, I've I've worked with Stephen um, pretty pretty. Uh, I've got a long track record, but yeah. I did reach out to him before I met him as a fan, and because we live really close and we got to know each other we just became good friends and good, good. We, we've got a lot of, in common you know we both love horror we do movie nights you know it's fun stuff mm -hmm. so it's interesting when you talk about a comic with no art and how the characters like talk to the artists and so on it reminds me of those old uh um uh, was it disney donald duck donald duck or daffy duck it was daffy duck daffy duck in the illustrator would have like a kind of cartoon oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, I see what you're and, yeah yeah it would be like changing things as he's talking and they end up just yeah his, see his, there uh, we go laughing. that the the meta thing goes way back before you know i didn't even think of that that's funny yeah, yeah. yeah. so stuff like that always it, it always makes me laugh because it's such such a surreal thing to see and yeah. you, you're just amazed by the, the, the creativity to kind of just have this kind of give and take and it, it, it's just I don't, know, I don't know it just works it works so well for daffy you know, yeah so yeah it makes, it makes sense it's going to work for for other characters especially print where you can change the panel dynamic you can change the camera angle you can change the focus page by page panel by panel if you need to so yeah yeah so, that's that's what was so appealing to, i'm just drawn to you know experimental stuff like i like okay. i like playing around with with content that's uh uh, taking tropes and, and twisting them a little bit, you know. Good. So good, good. What was it about horror then that got you involved? So let me ask this: Is it are you a horror fan that likes comics or a comic fan that likes horror, or is it like too mashed up now? I, I think it's like all mashed up. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I love horror. I love comics. I love sci-fi. I love video games. I love movies. I love mm -hmm. figurines. I love all. Uh, you know, if you saw my. Uh, uh, if we did a tour of my basement, it's like a museum. Um, I've had it featured in the Denver Post. It's so crazy. Um, so for me, it's like I just grew up consuming all of it. I'm a child of the 80s, right? And that's really, I think, when, you know, as you would know, the 80s, like, you know, What's Saturday morning that? cartoons. Are you looking at my, my gray hair and thinking I've been around since the 80s? <laughs> <laughs> but but you know like that's where like that's where it really blew up because yeah. you had the Saturday morning cartoons the the toys that were geared around that translating that into uh, uh, movies the comics that were so that's just me I, uh, that that's all of it so it's hard to um to to say that I'm a, a bigger fan of something than you okay. know. but I can't but I can say you know going back to what you'd mentioned it's kind of interesting just thinking about that like with the cons over there where there's the cosplay and the merch but not really the comics it's kind of like this is the side effect of 
you know, now cinema is all about comics, right? But right. because of that, it's almost like give uh, all the all the newbies that are coming into this stuff they've never read the books they're exactly. just watching the movies so they don't see a purpose for it because they yeah. know it's going to be a movie so yeah it's interesting it, it, it's quite circular I, I always i get quite on my high high horse about it because i always in my head it's comics uber others that's where that's where i'm comics first then the movie should be based on the comics or feature elements of the comics so that you can that i the fan can recognize i don't need to cater to to um joe public right you know? but in, in that, when that happens it kind of annoys me a little bit um that said i genuinely believe that the the era of the superhero movie is oh it's definitely go, going down i i don't know if it's gonna die out anytime soon but it, yeah i mean we've definitely uh we're beyond the plateau and it's starting mm. to, to move downward and truthfully yeah. to some I, that doesn't bother me because uh, uh, as much as I uh, enjoy those movies and see them, I want to see original content. I want to see new stuff, mm -hmm. you know, or at least uh, uh, in the superhero comic book world, let's, let's have them tap into indie stuff instead of mm -hmm. Marvel and DC regulars that we, even though I'm like, you know, we're yeah. the, <laughs> <laughs> the biggest icon of the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but really I want to see fresh stuff. I want to see new yeah. stuff. And so, um, you know, that doesn't it, bother me. It, and this is—I have this conversation quite a lot. This is, I suppose, the curse and the benefit of being an indie creator. The the benefit is you can go off in wild directions. You don't have like a board of directors saying, uh, "Excuse me, how are you going to put that back when you finish with it?" But the flip side of that is that you don't get instant brand recognition. Right. Yeah. yeah so you've got to. Yeah. You got to work harder to to get uh to to create a fan base, right? Yeah. And, definitely. And, but but those that do like it usually when you see that indie stuff when you have something even if it's a smaller base like they're fanatical about it and they really embrace it. So that's rewarding, I think, for the indie creator, is to just see uh even if the response is small, it, mm. it, it it's awesome to know that. Well, let. You, you talk about working hard, and I'm based in the in the UK, so this is in UK prices. Uh, let me flip this over for you. So you were asking for two and a half thousand dollars, and you are currently on six thousand five hundred and nineteen with one hundred and forty two backers. And at the time of recording, you've practically got a month left to go. So tell, talk to me about working hard again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, super grateful and excited that that uh, you know putting it. This is my first Kickstarter, right? So. Right. You know, it was probably like two and a half months of planning before we launched yesterday. And it's like nerve wracking as hell because it's a lot of work. A lot. You don't just slap something together and put it, click a button on Kickstarter. You're you're putting together a, a major campaign and plan. And then you're biting your nails wondering, is this going to work? You know, <laughs> is anybody going to be receptive? Um, so the anxiety when we launched yesterday, I, I, I didn't think. I was like, it's going to be a battle to fund by the end of the month. Even with Steven, he's a huge name, yeah. but we've got to convince people, right? It's not about the names, it's about the project. And that's what's cool is that people seem to be responding uh, um, to, well to this. So uh, the artwork's great. I think the idea is unique, and we've got some seriously awesome uh, rewards. Uh, we'll, we will get into that after the break. Um, before we hit the break um how difficult is it to do horror in a comic book i've asked i, I recently spent some time i've done i spoke to, to a couple of horror writers and creators and i always think in my head that when you watch a horror movie you talked about tropes earlier josh it's it's very much a there's a swinging door yeah and you know someone's going to be behind the door or the music changes or the dog starts barking You're like oh it's the old dog barking trick watch out for the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, but you don't get the jump scare in comic books, other than right. that that page turn, and even then, sometimes you don't get that because people read them digitally. Um, so then, how do you how do you try to figure in that level of horror, that level of um, tenseness to, to proceedings? Yeah. Well, first and foremost, I mean, Stephen's a master. So working with him, he knows it and he knows comics so well. Mm -hmm. So it worked really well. But I think our approach is more about tone and the message. 
uh, that we're trying to relay on the page from a page by page mm -hmm. standpoint. So we're not, you know, there aren't, I agree. I mean, how could you do a jump scare? You can have surprises, right? Mm -hmm. You end yeah. with something on the, the, the bottom of the page, you turn it and you've got a surprise and we certainly have that. But I think tone is what we're focused on. And mm -hmm. Stephen and I both have this kind of, um, a uh, silliness that you know a sense of humor so it's not we have really dark serious stuff in this comic but we also mm -hmm. have that light-hearted mix and i think when you know how to balance those tones um like wes craven did with scream you know it's got mm -hmm. it's that nice mix of humor and horror mm -hmm. that's what throws i think the readers off they, they you get them comfortable and then you shock them with something and you have to know how to play that out mm -hmm. and that i think that's what's the challenge in, in like a, a sequential art, you know, storytelling yeah. comic books. Um, so I hope we pulled it off. I mean, I think, I think we've got some pretty crazy stuff in here. So we'll, we'll see. Indeed. 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 So back in your formative years, when we were, you're, you're just a wee, wee band back in the eighties, what sort of stuff were you reading? Were you a Marvel DC guy? Um, uh, a lot of both. Back in the eighties both i mean like i grew up in a little town in nebraska right so the grocery store i mean it was like the population was like uh, 1500 people and the nearest town was 40 minutes the next nearest town is 40 minutes away so we were like really closed off right uh so all i had access to were the comics at the local grocery store so it was you know batman superman um mm -hmm. in particular uh and then um and the hulk uh, uh that, that was a big one for me um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, the really big stereotypical ones, but then where I transitioned a little bit um, for, for me was when Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters came out Perfect. and yeah. that was, you know, that's what's, that's what my, my tattoo sleeve is all about basically. All right. cool. um, so yeah, I, I, I transitioned into, into that stuff. Um, uh, okay. and, and, yeah. With that in mind then, with that in mind, don't say that I don't give what people ask for. Time for an advert for our other shows. This is the fantastic advert for Crisis in the Toyverse. Check it out. That was pretty much everything that, uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you go for it. You like that, yeah? <laughs> I loved it. And, and it's great because you have uh, Keanu Reeves in there, and I just met him like two weeks ago. So. Oh, so, name so. drop, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think I annoyed him, but hey, I'll, I still, I still got to meet him. <laughs> I don't think I don't think he can annoy him, can you? I thought he was like super chill with everybody. Yeah, he's he's like really, really um mellow, really uh yeah. uh a little uh, not a little, probably a lot of introverted, but he was really cool. I he signed some stuff. Uh, uh as odd as it sounds, I met him in an alley. Um yeah. so <laughs> um let me get CNN. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he was performing with his band Dog Star in oh, uh Boulder cool. and uh, I, I went to the show and and uh, uh, got lucky enough to meet him. So I would, I guarantee that I would, I would annoy Keanu Reeves because I'd turn around and say, "So tell me, did you really enjoy making the replacements?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, he he did tell me to chill out though. Um, it, it, like in a nice way, in a nice way. He, I was like, he signed some stuff. I was like, hey, do you mind if I get a photo with you? He's like, just chill, just chill. And then he, and then he posed for the photo. But uh, yeah. <laughs> He is my brother's favorite actor of all time. He's awesome. I mean, he's yeah, he's one of mine too. Like my my brother lives and breathes Point Break. How he used to when he was younger. Point Break, yeah, that's <laughs> that's a good. I was just talking about that with a buddy. Uh, yeah, no, awesome. Yeah, that but, that and Dracula. I've seen a many strange things already. Count. 
yeah. Man, yeah, you're you're naming some of the the real. Uh, I, I'm I'm definitely a Matrix John Wick guy, but I've yeah, Bram Stoker's Dracula is amazing. Point Break is amazing. Speed, of course, you know, so so many. Yeah. Pop flicks. The pop on the bus. It Constantine. <laughs> I mean, that's one of my favorites. My wife loves Constantine. Yeah, so oh, that, that's good. great that that you <laughs> you had, to, but you didn't. I'm gathering, yeah. I thought it was all right, but then I, in my head, Constantine talks like me. He's a Georgie mm. from New, he's from Newcastle and lives in Manchester, so he should sound like me. There you go. Yeah. Well, but, you could always do a voiceover, you know. Yeah. Edit it yourself. Yeah. How are how are you, ghosts and ghoulies? <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch that. <laughs> oh, you see, I've got a face for radio. All right. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Feel like that, <laughs> right. Let's have a look at the uh, Kickstarter some more. You mentioned you mentioned a couple of characters. Uh, you have Kit, uh, not to be confused with the dude from Knight Rider. Um, <laughs> uh, very, very. That cool. might have been Stephen's actual inspiration. To be honest with you, that wouldn't. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I have to ask him that. That's funny. Oh, cool. Um, yep, dead trendy. Got the boots. Got the ripped jeans. Excellent going on there. We've yeah. also got. Um, we're showing one of the um, pledges. You can pledge a dollar. Just because you want to, seven dollars is probably the the start off. You're getting two items included here, which I think is a little bit unique. You get your digital edition, which I think is must have uh, for international backers, um, and then your name in the credits. Because um, I mean, I don't mind dropping five dollars, seven dollars on a comic book. I do mind having to pay twenty five to get it shipped over. So sure, yeah. So, yeah. so what was in? So kit doesn't look like a black transam. <laughs> very, <laughs> very trendy though yes so she's kit is our uh she's she's the 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 cosplayer that's attending these conventions she's the veteran that's making these uh costumes and selling them for okay. her franchise that she loves uh called um uh killer which is the name of our antagonist slasher uh oh. and she considers herself and others um that are fans, real fans of this that cosplay and understand the character, true believers. That mm -hmm. hence the title. And she meets Rip, who's our other character here. And that that's kind of like obviously horror, rest in peace, but also uh uh Ripley, you know, the, the little oh, right. um, yeah. yeah. But uh uh Rip uh, is a new about his jeans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so his nickname is gonna be Patches or something. Patches. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'll have to think of, remember that <laughs> for for issue two. Um, oh, what have I done? I've created a monster. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Rip's a newbie. He's a he's a huge fan of Killer, the franchise uh -huh. Killer, uh, but he's never been to a convention before. So he checks out Kit's booth. They meet and um she kind of takes him under her wing to say this this is how it works here this is what it's like mm -hmm. and um she views rip as a true believer but then things start to go a little little dark bodies okay. turn up people yeah. are people are are slaughtered or so they think and mm -hmm. rip starts to question you know what's going on with your true believers concept of of these fans here and and essentially what it comes down to is kit Without getting too heavy into spoilers, Kit. Don't don't no spoilers. We want people to back it. Well, so no, no, if, we're, no, if we're to find well, out what there's Kit big things, to. there's there's big things. But the big question is, uh, uh, you know, what's who's a true believer and who isn't, and what are the consequences right. there? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm talking of said killer. Oh, by the way, there's the next one. Ten dollars uh, gets you four items. I quite like the sticker. I'm not going to lie. That looks pretty pretty spiffy. Um, Twelve dollars is next uh, again uh, for item signed copy, print copy uh, of the cover air, all oh, stickers and stuff, all good. What was the design? Of, I mean, I look at I look at Killer as a character. Um, obviously, Grammarly's gone a bit bonkers by missing the E off, but it's fine. Um, Grammarly's turned us already. Um, the lizard face reminds me of V. Do you remember V, the TV show? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the uh, man, you. Uh, yeah, my uh, I haven't talked about that in a while. Um, yeah, the 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 uh, killer with again, I'm not gonna get definitely not gonna get into spoilers about killer. Yeah, no, we, just... tease, we tease a little bit of who killer yeah. is, but we're gonna dive into that more into new later issues. But cool. killer is a uh, a unique character, 
great the design least. great design i will say that who came up with the design was that ben or was it kind of a, a group process it was a group process with Stephen and i ben and then aaron lovett and xander smith so it was actually a few other artists that contributed to our variant covers mm -hmm. we kind of cool. went back and forth and then ben took it a step further yeah cool. steve uh, steven knew that he wanted uh uh goggles that was like that was the big thing i need goggles right. i want goggles, I goggles. So. And, and a creepy smile so yeah good, good work a bit of a sith lord thing going on yeah there. yeah a little, little bit of darth maul that's the cosplayer i want to say yeah uh, <laughs> yeah and, and again that's the beauty that's the that's what we're trying to play with here is that cosplayers yeah. that's that is that person's iteration of killer cool you know so they can change it up oh no yeah oh no <laughs> You got the point, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no! And, and this killers. Is, and this is just a preview. <laughs> yes, this is yeah. The first four pages we've we've previewed. Yeah, the final uh, issue one will be twenty four pages. So. Cool. And there you go. There's some of the rewards you've got going on: original cover art, signed prints, uh, three day passes for Colorado Festival of Horror for this year for, for next year yeah next year, 23, 23. so that's great do you also cover plane tickets if i get that one no no we don't no travel but you get, a, a good... you get you get two free uh two vip passes yeah yeah cool i like that one that's cool An official soundtrack so this is a this is a relevant relevant rel relatively new facet I've, I've discovered you know a couple of uh big name creators tend to have music on as they're either writing or drawing um is this is this a new way of getting psyched into the kind of mindset of, of the characters involved i mean for me it's not new it's how, how i've always done it i've uh uh i've now had multiple this is like the fourth or fifth fifth soundtrack for a narrative that i've done so I've been doing this for a while and I have a really good relationship with the artists behind it, but it's just really cool because it's, it allows you to experience the story in a different mm -hmm. way. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, and we, we, th the music does play a role in the actual comic where we cool. have a fun way of uh, kind of bringing that in a little bit. And we specifically, there's a lot of covers for some popular, uh, horror stuff we've got cry a little sister from you know the theme song basically from the lost boys the halloween oh, theme thriller nice. yeah cool so excellent. preview we previewed a few of the the tracks for some people to check out um, excellent so check out the kickstarter page to hear some of those interesting uh, and i get where you're coming from for me music's so evocative and um I, so i'm a star wars i'm a star wars brat um back from a new hope back before it was called a new hope and um before we had the multimedia thing that we have now the only way you could enjoy star wars after you've seen it in the cinema would be buying this the soundtracks this and this work out which bit of music goes where and that kind of set me on the track for like the, the thematic music where like you hear one particular fanfare and that's that's luke and you hear another yeah. one that's chewbacca and, and all that sort of kind of crazy stuff so as I sit and I listen to music and I'll say to my wife, oh, this is the bit where, oh, you know, if I'm listening to the lyrics, this is what, you know, what do you think this means? I get this. And she's like, Johnny, it's just a song. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in the same boat as you. I mean, I, I, I it, it definitely, it evokes an emotion, right? And that yeah. that's why a score can do so much for a film. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same thing here. And we actually, we do have uh, an original track in the soundtrack for our theme for for Killer. Oh, so scary masks. Oh yeah, so I I I, ha I have it here to. Hang on, Don. Yeah. If you want to do that, let me uh, make it, make yeah. your uh, picture bigger. So yeah, this is probably my favorite. Well, it's not probably. This is my favorite uh, perk for the. Put it on. Put yeah. it. On. I can't. I gotta. It won't stay on with the headphones. But uh, th this is one of the coolest rewards. So yeah. And we're we've got some awesome uh, plans for uh, uh, stretch goals. So cool. that will kind of go along with this. So yeah. Cool. Excellent. You seem to have thought of everything. You've covered off your comic books. You've covered the horror. You've got the soundtrack going on. You've got a really kick-ass premise for a story that you think to yourself. You know, it's going to make it meta. People in Colorado and attendees of the con are going to say, oh, look, it could be us. It could be you. 
It could. Well, the, don't give anybody any ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, don't say too much. Um, where was I going to say? It? So, if you're interested in checking out the Kickstarter, there is the link. Yes, I know Kickstarter links are long, but you all know how to use a computer. Dead easy. You get yourself to a Kickstarter. You type in "True Believers," and it will come up. It's that simple. How hard can it be, right? Right. Ah, right? Easy enough. Easy enough. Um, and obviously, uh, social media plays an, uh, an interest. So uh, for Twitter, that's right. I said Twitter. There's no X for Hex. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Um, it is uh, a Twitter address, Hex Publishers. How long have you been publishing uh, comics and books? Uh, since 2012. Yeah, so that's, that's a that's a good while, man. Yeah, it's been, been at it for a while. So yeah. try, you know, I've done the... Th- 3D comic apps, some, yeah, a, a, a vast array of things, yeah, and a lot of tie-ins. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I suppose all that goes into into the pot in creating something like True Believers. Yeah, yeah. This is this is actually this has been the most fun I've had creating something in, in a while. So I'm really, I'm I really love the the uh, the final result. So I hope people, you know that. People do too, um, of yeah. course. Or they can put the mask on and come get me at the con. You know. <laughs> Don't give people ideas. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you have a whole like signing list of people in the mask. You're like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, I'll, just, I'll have a body double. So. Yeah, yeah. Can you sign this in blood? Right. Yeah. I'd <laughs> actually love it if somebody asked uh, asked me to do that. That'd be great. <laughs> Crazy. Josh, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you, man. Your project looks fantastic. Look at the success you've had already, man. It, you, you've Thank smashed you. your funding target. You've got, as we said earlier, you've got the whole month to go yet. You must be yeah. absolutely stoked. You must be chuffed. To- oh, it's it's awesome, man. I, I'm just really grateful that people have, it's resonated with people. They like it. And it has me really excited for the next couple issues and what we can do, you know, so, uh, down the road. It- how long is the, the the arc? Is it going to? It's not one and done. I assume it's going to be an arc. Uh, we're doing three. Um, if it continues to grow, maybe more. We've got some ideas. Um, and we're going to visit different conventions. That'd be cool, uh, wouldn't it? Oh, oh, that well, no, I got to show love for Colorado Festival of Horror. Well, but I get that. We, I get that. But there's a there's a there's one in Baltimore that talks about Edgar Allan Poe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we already started. We have an idea for how to approach it. Um, I don't, yeah, well, it, no, it's going to yeah, be fun. We'll talk we, we've got of. some fun stuff, but it, next year, uh, issue two, uh, and then the following year, issue three. So Stephen and I have already scripted, roughly scripted issue two. And, uh, yeah, we, we're, we're, we got some fun stuff in store. So really exciting, you know, to, to, to get into this and know that people are excited for it too. And, and, you know, we're, we're really? working on something that they're going to like, I hope so. I, well, I think I think like triple funded in in one day with a month left to go pretty much tells me that people are excited about the project. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. Things. So yeah, cool, excellent, Josh. You've been fantastic. Thank you so much for spending the time. Thank you. I know you're busy in Kickstarter hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's heaven right now. So heaven, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's heaven because you don't have to ship anything. We're twenty nine days. Then you're like, oh my god, <laughs> we're going to ship to where? Yeah, you said you were going to help out, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll help out. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll ship them Fly up. out here. You can help yeah, yeah. help uh, pack the orders. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. All right, Josh. Thanks so much, man. Really, thank you very it. much. Yeah. Um, there you, you go, guys. Another episode done. Don't forget to check out the UCPN for all your favorite shows. You saw the trailer for it earlier. Crisis in the Toyverse. And if you still like your Marvel and your DC, don't forget to check out the No Price podcast for all you Marvel fans, including anyone who's still watching the soccer. Um, and of course, your DC, your DC fans on the Definitive Crusade, where nobody goes to the cinema and just talks about comic books. There you go. What more could you want? Josh, you've been an absolute blast. Thank you Thank so you. much, sir. Thank you so much. I have been your host, Johnny Machine Hughes. And as always, Hashtag fins up. No, that's something else. Adios. Visit undercovercapes.com for the latest and greatest podcasts via the Undercover Capes Podcast Network. Also visit our parent company website, comiccrusaders.com, all about comic pop culture. <laughs>